Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. You know the drill. We're back at it again with the r slash entitled people reddit stories. So let's just jump into it, shall we? Entitled Parker parked in my driveway, so I blocked them in and got drunk all weekend. Friday night, I came home from work to find someone on our block and someone decided they were entitled to park in my driveway. Keep in mind, my driveway is a single car width lined with a retaining wall on both sides and a garage at the end. Essentially impossible for a tow truck to come pull them out without property damage. Seeing this and the lack of street parking, I took this as a cue to park right behind them in my driveway. Now, a few hours go by and the entitled parker is now knocking at my door, demanding I move my car so she can leave. Seeing as they were demanding, I informed them that I had been drinking and would not move my car. The entitled parker then decides to call the police to get them to force me to move. When the police knocked on my door, I was sure to grab a beer from the fridge before I answered to talk to the officer. I had informed him that after I got home, I was unwinding and had been drinking and was in no shape to drive. At this point, their hands were tied because they couldn't tow her car out, I'm in no shape to drive, and I'm legally parked in my driveway. I ended up telling the entitled parker that since it is a long weekend, I would be on a weekend long bender and I'll move my car after I go to work on Tuesday. Jeez. The absolute entitled audacity to park in someone else's driveway and then demand that they move. Honestly, if I were OP, I would have taken an Uber to work on Tuesday just as an extra little F you. Heck, I would have taken an Uber all week. My beautiful wife versus Macho Rooster, our entitled neighbor. Background, this is a story from many years ago. I provided on-site tech work in a niche market all over America. The work is good and pays well, but the traveling can be rough as I put in some 100,000 miles, 160,000 kilometers a year by car. As I travel mostly by car, during the summer, we pay reliable types to feed the cats and water the lawns while I take the whole family on the road. My kids get to see much of America and parts of Canada and Mexico and have fantastic vacations while I get to travel and still have the company of my family after work. The trips normally last three to four months. These are great times. Unfortunately, during the winter, the kids have school and I get to be away on my own for anywhere from two weeks to four months on a stretch. This story happens during one of those times and my beautiful wife is alone managing things at home. The setup. When we first move into our house, there is a great family that lives across the street from us. They are very respectful and really great neighbors. They're upper middle class Latinos. They own a bar. They have fixed up their house in some very nice ways, including a wrought iron fence around the yard. They have several nice cars, more than they can fit in their driveway. But they also have a problem. For whatever reason, someone in the local constabulary just cannot accept that a Latino business owner of a bar can make this kind of money without also dealing drugs. Every month, the police swoop in with warrants and drug sniffing dogs and spend hours going through their house and cars with a fine toothed comb. Every month, they leave empty handed with no arrests, no tickets, and no infractions. Every month, the neighbor come over to apologize for any disturbance this inspection causes us. They are mortified every time it happens. Every month, we tell them not to worry about it. We always reassure them that this says more about the police than it does about them. Believe me, if they had been doing anything at all, they would have already been caught. They appreciate our support, as my wife and children are also Latino, so we're glad to give it. Finally, they've had enough of it. They sell the bar and the house and move to a smaller town in another state with a larger Latino population and open a new bar there. I wish them well. There follows a string of much lower class Latinos in their old house. None of them live there for very long. I suspect there may be a scummy landlord behind some of this, the Macho Rooster. Then comes the day when Macho Rooster moves in. He is the presumable scummy landlord, the owner of the house. This makes him a somebody and somebodies are an entitled thing to be. He's 
struts about in nice clothes and bling. This is his domain. He has declared himself emperor of the street and any who challenge it will rue the day. Major main character syndrome. Almost immediately, we start having trouble with him and his family parking in our driveway or in front of the mailbox. If the mailbox is blocked, the post won't be delivered. My beautiful wife will take the kids to school or pick them up and come home to find that she has to park on the street. This rubs her all kinds of wrong, but leaving nasty grams on the windshield is not improving things at all. If they get a shot at our driveway, they take it. We had called to have him towed many times, but he always moves just in time. Must have tow truck radar or something. Weekends are even more fun. Not only is the entire street filled with cars related to his house, but the party and music is playing so loud that all of our windows shake. It keeps up until 3, 4, or even 5 in the morning. He has bullied many of the neighbors with his macho posturing, so they won't call the police with a noise complaint out of fear. We call. They turn it up even louder after the police leave. Yeah, he's a real class act, this one. The event. So this day, my wife returns from picking up the kids from school, and their car is in our driveway. What's different this time is the young lady sitting in the car, waiting for something or someone. Wife parks on the street, gets the kids in the house, and then comes out to have a chat with the young lady. It goes something like this, as relayed to me by my wife. Excuse me, I'm going to need you to move your car out of my property. You have no permission to park here. Excuse me? My uncle said I could park here, so you can just fuck off. Your uncle doesn't own this driveway. He can't give you permission to park in my driveway. That's not how it works. If he said I can park here, I can park here. She then goes out, locks the car, and walks across the street. Beautiful wife calls after her. I can have you towed, you know. She's looking up the number for the towing company. Remember the good old days when we used yellow pages for things like this? When there comes a knock at the door, it's Macho Rooster, and he's huffing and puffing. Wife opens the door and confronts him. How dare you tell my niece she can't park here? I told her she could. What makes you think that matters? You can't give permission to anyone to park on my property. Macho Rooster puffs up his chest more. Look, little lady, you obviously don't know who you're talking to. If I say it, it happens. Beautiful wife laughs. He is actually shorter than her, just extremely buff. Look, little man, that macho sh doesn't fly here. Maybe where you're from, you're a big deal and that shit works. But where I come from, the men are afraid of the women. We know what rolling pins are good for and we're not afraid to use them. I have a nice marble one in here. Would you like to see it? This obviously did not suit Macho at all. He starts sputtering nearly incomprehensible bits of phrases that include some snippets like, how dare you? And nobody talks to me like this and so on. But most mostly just sputtering like an old car with gas in the carburetor. Now at this point, beautiful wife takes a stance that is a quick reaction away from demonstrating a beautiful soccer kick to Macho's low-hanging fruit. As she can see, he is about to use something other than his words to get his point across, and she's ready to defend herself. But she can see something he and his sputtering rage cannot, and that is the police car that's just pulled up behind his niece's car. So as Macho's fist raises over his head to beat her into submission, she decides it's worth playing the helpless victim and taking the hit. She cowers just a little and cries. To her amazement, the blow never lands. Officer Friendly breaks the speed of light to stop him. Very shortly thereafter, Majo is shown a new kind of bling, a set of silver bracelets. He's placed in the back of a cruiser. Other police arrive. Beautiful wife is the perfect little victim. She is so so afraid of him and what he could do to her and her kids. With her being home all alone while her husband is traveling for work after all, she believes her performance is Oscar worthy. Doubtful, but it's good enough for the intended audience. The niece is forced to move her car off our property. Macho is not seen in the neighborhood for nearly a week. There are some apparently complicating issues that make this much worse for him, but the police are not free to disclose. And we really don't care. The aftermath. 
For the rest of the time he lives across the street from us, Macho never acknowledges our existence again. He also never allows any of his people to park in our driveway, in front of our mailbox, or anywhere in front of our property. We only have one more all night music Friday night, but the first visit from the police results in the music going off permanently. Yeah, we called the complaint in. Under his ownership, the house is not properly maintained. It eventually falls into disrepair. He sells it, I suspect, to buy another one to run down. It's the opposite of flipping homes. Beautiful wife, the winner by default. Macho Rooster didn't even qualify for the match. Oh, hell no. If I were OP and someone did that to my wife, I would be shining my shotgun on the front porch from then on out. Even though I live in Canada and that's illegal here, I would still do it, damn it. You know, I too have terrible neighbors that love to park their 16 cars in front of my house while I'm forced to park down the street in the middle of icy winter whilst carrying a newborn baby. It's great. And from the very short conversations I've had with them, they're also a bunch of racists too. But you know what's amazing? My lease is up in April and my absolutely wonderful landlord who I adore from India is moving his entire family in. I warned my landlord about the neighbors and he told me he's not worried. Oh, to be a fly on the wall in this neighborhood when that happens. It just makes my petty heart sing. But anyway, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this entitled people slash petty revenge slash neighbors from hell story. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!